Okay, let's talk about resumes today. Resumes are really the most important thing you have when you're looking for a job. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter who you are or how skilled you are. If you don't portray that correctly on a resume, your chances of getting interviews and calls back is really low, right? So you have to think of it as the only entryway to get your foot in the door. Now, it's kind of like a dating profile. If you want to create a dating profile, you don't want to use your worst pictures. You don't want to create a stupid bio because you might be an amazing person. You could be the best person available for any girl or guy out there, whatever. But if you don't portray yourself that way, it's useless, right? It doesn't matter who you actually are. It's what you have to portray yourself as. And same with jobs and same with overemployment. If you want to be overemployed, you have to get job interviews and job offers. So to get that, you have to market yourself extremely well. And this is a big issue even a lot of people in tech have because they're used to the technical aspects of things and they're used to doing things, but they're not really used to marketing themselves and selling themselves, right? This is something usually more for extroverted people or people that kind of understand the psychology and the social aspects of success in today's world. You have to be able to market and sell yourself. Now, I'm not saying all you should do is market and sell yourself in a deceiving way. You should have the intrinsic value with skills, but also with the very strong marketing and sales aspect of your entire skill set. So what do you do for your resume? A lot of you guys have too long of resume. So that's one really important thing. If you don't have over 10, 15 years of experience, even then it could be a stretch. You don't need more than a page on your resume, right? No one cares about the time you worked in a factory um, seven years ago. If you've already had three, four years of tech experience, you can just get rid of those useless experiences, right? No one really looks at that. Um, the other really important thing is having a nice, clean, readable resume, right? Like a lot of you guys might have resumes that maybe the, the information and content is okay, but it's ugly to look at, right? Like you have to realize that employers and hiring managers sometimes only really take five seconds to look at it, the resume, right? They kind of scan it up and down quickly. And if it just looks off to them right off the bat, they're just kind of getting, getting discarded, right? They have no investment and incentive to look that deeply into your resume, right? If they have 100 or 50 resumes on their desk, on their computer, they're not going to look for a reason to make sure you're the best candidate. No, you have to provide that reason for them. So a nice clean resume is going to stick out to them because they're going to be like, oh, okay, this person's good. But also it's going to be easier for them to extract that important information, right? So have a nice clean resume, good formatting. I really recommend using something like Latex. Um, there's a lot of websites out there you can use to do this in browser so you can kind of uh, make the latex uh, changes and then you can see the interactive dynamic changes happening live. So something like overleaf.com, I'll link it in the description box below. That's a great site for making resumes. There's a lot of templates out there that you can take from that site and just directly input your, your own personal experiences and content and personal information, things like that. So if your resume is really all over the place with missed spaces or extra spaces or misaligned formatting. It's just not the way to go, right? Use something standardized and formatted correctly. The other thing, the order of which you place your education, experiences, and skill sets or projects, right? So you have to realize what's what you have to offer. Let's say you have three to five years of experience, strong tech experience, for example, you're going to want to put that at the top of your resume. That That's going to be the number one thing you want to show employers, right? Because that's the most marketable thing you have. They're not going to care that you know um, Python or C++ if you've already worked at Google for five years, right? As a software engineer, they're going to want to see that first because they're going to ignore the skills once they already see that you've worked at Google for five years. They're going to be like, oh, okay, I know this guy's going to be good for us. I don't care even to look at his skill set at that point. Like they'll still look at it, but it won't really influence their decision as the main driving factor for hiring you on or taking you on for an interview, right? So if you have great experience, or even if you have one to two, three, four, five years, whatever, if you have some experience, put that number one uh, on the top of your resume, because that's going to be the first thing they see. And it's going to lead to a higher chance of them wanting to invest in you. So after experience, I recommend putting things like skills and education. So this can kind of be interchangeable. Um, you could put skills first, because to be honest, if you already have experience, they're not going to care about the education as much. Um, but you can still put education after skills and it's a great way to show that you have verifiable proof that you have some type of credentials right and that you've completed some type of education and you're not just completely self-taught now you don't need education a lot of people get by without education and that's why it's very important to have the experience there first right so but again i would go experience first and then if you do have education put that second and then skill sets so another thing um don't don't forget that in your experience section when you're describing your past roles and experience you don't want to 
you, you want to really make it easy for the employer to see that you actually made an impact, right? So if you coded something at your last job, you don't want to just say, I, I made this feature that does this, right? No, you have to realize that at the end of the day, all of these companies are businesses and businesses need profit to survive and to thrive. So if you write something like I use Java to uh, create this backend functionality to do this, no one's really going to care, right? They'll be like, oh, okay, he can code, cool. But if you did something like uh, he wrote, I wrote this uh, feature in Java to optimize our site's speed by 15%. Now that's going to stand out to hiring managers, right? When they see verif like real stats and uh, data that shows that you actually made a genuine impact to the business, that's going to be very impressive for them. And obviously, this is not always going to be verifiable, right? So they, they know that you could be lying a little bit about this or you know fiddling with the truth, of, truth a little bit. It doesn't mean you're lying completely, but maybe a little bit, right? Um, kind of making a little bit of numbers up. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter to them as much because they're going to know at that point that you know that the business and profit aspect is important to this company, right? And the fact that they know that means they also know that when you do, if you do in the join their company in the future, they'll know that you're not just going to be thinking about writing your code in a certain type of way so it's pretty or elegant. No, they're going to know that you also care about the business making money, which is a good company fit for them right for any company out there that wants to make money so them recognizing that you also recognize that is an amazing thing so other than that you know um, there's not too many things just clean resumes standardized keep it to one page especially if you don't have much experience start with your experience and provide very data-based experience points in your past roles and then list your education and skills if you have the education and with skills you know you can always like extend the truth a little bit with your skills obviously you're not gonna have, be able to be an expert in every single skill you have and most people aren't so be kind of liberal with listing your skills and then in the interview you can always say i have experience with this but i'm not an expert i just know it a little bit right and that'll be fine for 99 percent of employers like they'll understand that you're not going to be an expert in everything you list in your skills so if you guys enjoy this content or if you have any other resume tips, we'd love to hear them. Put them down below in the description or in the comment box. And remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel. And if you do want to become overemployed, follow these tips for your resume, but also check out the overemployed masterclass. That'll be linked in the description box and the pinned comment below. In the overemployed masterclass, we teach you how to become and how to stay overemployed. We sk help skip the boring parts for you and all the parts that can cause a lot of issues. Now, you don't need the masterclass. You can become overemployed by yourself, but this will make it 10 million times easier so also check out the discord free discord in the description box below and pin comment below you can join the free discord people talk in there great great stuff in there and you'll learn a lot of things as well and again thanks for watching like the video and subscribe to the channel and i will see you guys next time